I'm going to be preaching tonight out of the book of Ephesians. So if you have your phone or if you have your Bible, you can turn there so long. Ephesians is a, is a beautiful book. It's got, it's got six chapters, um, and it's split right down the middle. Chapters 1 to 3, Paul, who, who wrote the letter, is dealing with this big question, this big question around Christian community. And it's, it's the question of who's in and who's out, basically. Who's in and who's out? And are there some reasons or qualifying factors that would make you in and maybe some qualifying factors that would make sure that you are always out? I remember um, a while back when I used to work up in Joburg, I'm glad those, those days are over, um, but I was working as a civil engineer. I, I studied at, at Tux, Tux of Nux, anybody, anybody here? Yeah, no, no, we'll, we'll chat afterwards. Um, but, uh, but I studied up there and, and how it works is you study for four years and then you need to do some working experience and after that you apply to become a professional engineer. This is a big deal in the engineering world. Um, and I did that. I worked. I got all the right experience. I had mentors. I did CPD points, continuous professional development points for those of you that are working. Did all that stuff. And basically, you compile these three or four liver art files of all your experience and stuff, and you submit it. And then they call you for an interview. And you go, two old bullies with gray hair, they basically interview you about, oh, have you got it? You know, have you got it to be able to take professional liability for buildings and structures and dams and whatever it is? And I went and I did this interview and it went extremely well. These guys loved me. It was all going well. They loved my presentation, my slides, graphics, the works. Um, they asked the questions. I felt like I could answer everything. And I left that meeting thinking, it's in the bag. I got this. I even went back and I drafted the email to my boss to say, I've got this. And I've, I got professionally registered, which means I would have had a promotion, a bit of a salary increase. And then it just went went quiet on the other end. And I went quiet, I phoned eventually, and then I got back the letter to say, I failed the, the exam, basically. And in, in my world then, there's three levels. The one is that you pass and you get in. The other is that you get sent back to go and redo something or get more experience in a certain area. And then the last level is you fail outright and you need to go back to the drawing board, basically. And I got that, got that level. Um, yeah, thanks, appreciate that, anyway. Um, <laughs> But anyway, and, and the inbox, the email in my inbox is still sitting there. I never, I never sent it. Um, but that's, it was a feeling for me of, of being rejected in, a, in some way, but just feeling like there was this clique of people called professional engineers, and I couldn't make it in. And I'm still not professionally registered. Just by the way, I've changed professions, but that's a long story. But I, I just, I couldn't, I put in my best effort to get in, and I couldn't make it. I just couldn't make the grade. And I just say, feel sometimes... Christianity or Christian circles can be a bit like that, where it just feels like you just, you're not going to cut it. You to this or to that, or your history is too bad, or whatever it is. And Paul is writing in Ephesians 1 verse 3 to saying, we are all in. We're all in. We all have access to this beautiful thing called the family of God. He's writing about adoption into God's family. He's saying, you're in. You're in. There's no Jew, no Gentile. There's no old bullies with gray hair that can disqualify you. He's saying you are all in. And that's an incredibly powerful message for us this evening. To say it doesn't matter your experiences of church or maybe your rejection of a church setting, but to say you are welcome in God's family and everybody is in. Everybody is in. And family is a, family is a beautiful thing. Family is a, it's a gift. My eldest son, Zach, he loves walking the, the four of us together, all holding hands, saying, this is my family, my family. And he walks, walks down the road. He loves it because family, it's a, it's a place to be safe. Um, Heidi Baker, who, you, um, she works in Mozambique and has adopted a number of kids in Mozambique. She says, when you know that, that an adopted child becomes part of the family, it's when they can go into the fridge and open the fridge and take whatever they want and walk out, eh? I think we can relate when we go home to our parents' house. You just go in there and you just dominate. You know, you go, it's all those things that you couldn't have or you can't afford in your own flat. And you go in there. When I go to Amy's parents' house, it took me a while, but I'm there now. And they've got a rule, if you, if you see it, you can eat it. So there's no, there's no, like, um, there's no preference there. Amy's still getting there with my parents, but, but we, we're working on that. Um, but it's a wonderful gift to be a part of this thing called family. And just that's the premise of Ephesians 1 verse 3, to say we are in this family. You're in. If you're here tonight, you're in. If you've given your life to the Lord, you're in. You're part of this beautiful thing called community. And then chapters 4, verse 6, 
It's this big one little word to kick it off. It says, therefore, therefore, dun, 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 therefore, live a life worthy of the call. And what's, what it's saying is we can't stop there. We can't stop being a part of a wonderful thing called a Christian family. We need to live lives worthy of the call. And he goes into sort of unpacking this, and it's around thinking, it's around us speaking, it's around husband and wives, it's around dynamics of relationships, of workplace, of kids, all of that. He unpacks in a lot of detail, but he also talks amazingly and interestingly about, about this kind of a setting, about a church. What, what should a church look like? If we are accepted and we are adopted into God's family, what should we look like? That's a good question for me in terms of what, is this, what does this thing look like? Not, not building, not venue, not logo, not neon signs outside, but what is this? What does this look like? And that's what we're going to just dive into a bit today. So well, what does a community of God look like? What does church look like? What should it look like? And how can we aspire to be towards that? If it's your first time here tonight, a warm welcome to you. It's part of, you're part of a family as you come and to visit this church, and you get stuck in and grow together with this beautiful family, and to know what we're aiming for, what, what we're striving for. So you can turn to Ephesians 4, verse 14 to 60, and it'll be on the, on the screen behind me. It says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, Speaking truth in love, we will grow to become in every aspect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined together in every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each does his work. And that's what we're talking about tonight. And the first point or the first idea of that is that it's, it's not just a family, but it's a participating family. It's a participating family family, that as we are part of Christ's body, there's a, an expectation on us to, to do work towards his church and towards his kingdom, that we participate in what God is doing. And the beautiful thing, you know what the beautiful thing about a family is? I, I don't know, all of you who know, families are, they can be the best place and the most difficult places, eh? You don't fight with anybody else like you fight with your sibling, eh? I used to kick and scream and fight with my sister, and we, we're good friends now, but that's how, that's how it goes, is Families, there's a uniqueness about each person, a difference about each person, but that's also, that's what makes you family, and that's what makes you family, and unity in our congregation, in our church, does not mean uniformity, it doesn't mean exactly looking exactly like each other, it means bringing your best into this beautiful thing called church, and delivering on that. I mean, if you look at Gabe and I, we, we cut from different cloths, to be honest. I mean, he's from Zimbabwe, I'm from South Africa. He's a little bit short, I'm tall, thin, buff, all those things. But we, we, wired, we wired quite differently. And I'm, a, I'm, really, I'm an introvert, he's an extrovert, but, but we are fundamentally, we, different, we are different people. But God uses those differences for the betterment of his kingdom. That Christ speaks about his, his church being his body, and like, these, these limbs that operate differently, if you're an ear, let, you, must, you must hear. If you're a hand, you must work, you must write. If you're an eye, you must see. That just, there are so specific functions in his body that we're all called to, and different ones, and different ones. And to take time to almost to let that settle a bit, to say, what does it mean to be a part of a participating family tonight? And maybe, I, I'm sure there are, because I know I've got stories in my own family, but maybe family for you tonight is a bit of a, it's not a word that sits well, just because things haven't been lacquer in your own family, or maybe there's been divorce, or maybe you've been brokenness in your family, but, but family too can mean a body, can mean a, a real a bringing together of God's people. So I just want to almost, if there's, if there's a hesitation this morning, I don't want to commit, I don't want to get in, I don't want to get stuck in because I've just seen, you know, I've seen relationships go badly. This morning, it's about coming in and saying, I'm going to start afresh with this new family of Jesus Christ. It's a participating family that, Paul, that Paul speaks of, of what the church should look, out, look like. And it's a participating family that does, that does something. It builds. It builds something. I remember as an engineer, we were doing work out in Pumalanga on the, on the coal mines there. 
and I was, um, I used to work in, in earthworks, so we would design like these stormwater drains, and we would separate clean and dirty water on the mine, so it was these big, like, big trenches that we would dig um, to take water away, and I, I designed this one system where it needed to drain, to drain this water, and it was at the base of, um, of a slimes dam, so I don't know, for, I don't know if you would have seen the news at Yaffa's Fontaine some time back, there was that slimes dam that failed, you see that, where a whole bunch of people died, but on a mine, they put all their, they put all their slurry and all their basically leftover stuff into a dam, which is supported by earthworks, basically. And I designed the system which would take this trench at the bottom of this dam and would take the water away. But in my, in my youth, I was unsupervised at the time. I want to say I didn't have the guidance that I needed. Um, in my youth, I, I miscalculated the coordinates on, on the dam. So when I arrived, I remember driving over in Pumalanga and, and driving, driving over the hill and seeing the situation play out on site where instead of digging the trench like in the, in the wetland where they should have, they were digging the trench away on the toe of this dam. Where, and on the toe is where, where all the support comes from, all the base comes from. And they were just digging, and they had this excavator digging with about 15 people at the bottom there. They were just, they were going for it. And I just, I remember my heart stopping just because realizing if you, take, if you take that toe away, this thing's, it's going to slide up, it's going to fail. And just coming in there, I, I genu genuinely think my life would have headed in a different direction if that, if that happened. It didn't happen, and we're all good, and maybe that's why I didn't get my professional registration. But, um, but that's, that's what happens in the church at times. And I would say where there's instability, then there's a disaster waiting to happen. On that dam, when we were, when we were cropping away at the toe of that dam, it was, it was becoming unstable, it was becoming insecure, it was becoming uncertain, and there was potential for catastrophic failure. And Paul speaks so clearly in his word about this issue around how do you build? How do you, how do you build together? He says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful schemes. Instead, speaking truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. And this is a big statement, and I take a moment to, to process it. But where there's immaturity, there's instability. Where there's immaturity, there's instability. And where there's maturity, there's stability in being able to build and being able to grow together. So I just, there's almost a call or a challenge tonight in terms of a congregation like this, a, a beautiful congregation like this. It's been around for some time and has, has done incredible things, experienced it all in a real way, that there's a maturity of stepping into what God has called you to. And maturity is basically, it's not being, not being, being flip-flop in terms of how we, how we do church, how we go about church, but it's being mature in the Lord and how important that is. Because immaturity is somebody says something from the stage that, that you don't like, or somebody doesn't greet you at the door, or you just don't feel like you're quite right, and you just, you bolt, you know? I'm off to the next church down the road. And if you hear for the first time, and you think this is the best church you've ever been to, and you, this is the best thing you've ever seen, you, you're still in the honeymoon phase, and it's great, and we, we're still in that, which is amazing. Let's stay in it for as long as possible. But if you stay here for long enough, Brett or Shelley's going to offend you. I mean, they're going to they're gonna say something that's going <laughs> to... More Brett, more Brett, more Brett. But they, they, somebody's going to say something to you that, that's going to rub you up the wrong way and going to cause, cause an issue. But what, I think what Paul's saying to us is to build is, is to be mature in what we're doing. So firstly, that we participate as a family and then we build towards maturity and speaking truth in love. That's, that's how, how we do it. We don't get soft on theology. We get strong on love. We don't get soft on the things that we say from the pulpit not to offend. We just get strong in, in doing it well and preaching it well and building a community together that love each other in extravagant ways. And I've seen that. I've seen that in this body, in, these, in you, in this, this group of people of what love can do when you come around somebody. And that's what we call to do to build God's, build God's church. And then finally, Christ's church. What, what, what is church? What, the word church, what, what does it mean? Because I've heard myself say things like, um, can we send somebody from the church to go and, and help this person? There's, there's a poor person 
she's laughing because I think she's read the emails. But um, there's this poor person in my community that needs help. Can, can you send somebody from the church? Or um, somebody in our life group is going through a bit of a wobble. Can somebody from the church go and have a coffee with them and talk to them? We, it's easy. And, and this church does this well and not that well. And this church is friendly. But this church, the communion, the juice is a bit sweet. To criticize the church as something that ex- is external from us. And I think there's a sinking in that Paul's trying to stress something here is what he's, what he's saying to you and to me and to us tonight and in the book of to the letter to the Ephesians is that you are the church. You're it. There's somebody having a wobble that you know. You're it. You can phone for advice. You can phone for input. You can phone to make things happen. But the long and the short of it is that you're it. That God has established something inside of you and that you are the church that needs to go out there and make the difference. The church, the word, um, it means belonging to or the tribe of God. Just like, I like that. It's a, it's, a, it's a tribe that together we are followers of the way and the church is busy building and growing in each of us. The, the, the text also, the Bible speaks of so many different examples in terms of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ being the church, this all being the church. The temple, the building, the house, as Ryan said, the cornerstone of our faith and our church is Jesus Christ. And a flock, that we are his flock. I like that. A bunch of sheep following the shepherd in terms of following him and what we're doing. Not that it can breed complacency, but we know who our shepherd is and who we are following. And then importantly too is that it's Christ's church. We good? It's Christ's church. Who's the head? Who's, who's the rock? Who's the foundation? It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ is the head of our church. And we, have, we are incredibly privileged and we are, we are extremely lucky to have wonderful leaders like Gabe and Fee. It really, in terms of people that care deeply, deeply for our community, that lead our community, that preach the word, that love each of you deeply, that pray for you, that wake up in the middle of the night, I know that they're on their knees praying for this community day and night. I know that with certainty. Their hearts burn for this community. And it's a privilege to be able to serve with them and serve under them in, in, this, in this congregation. But I know in talking to them too, if we ask, ask them who the, who the head of this church is, it's Jesus Christ, our Lord. And they are a part of this body and they are leading this body, not to confuse that, But in terms of who we are ultimately following, it's Jesus Christ, the head of the church. Amy and I, some time back, um, we moved to Cape Town and we had had nowhere to go. We we kind of, we visited a few few churches, um, the one with the neon lights, went there for a bit. And we just, we... (laughs) We, went, we weren't sure where to settle in. So we got invited by, by a friend to, to go to um, the evening service at Tableview. And it was, a, it was a great experience. And just the testimony of church has been us finding our home in the church. Us finding community in the church. And us also being guided by our ultimate shepherd in terms of following him at every step. And that's my conviction tonight is that when, when we are preaching things, when we are challenging things, when we are pushing things, the answer is not to do it because Gabe and Fee said it, or not to do it because that was a challenge from from Mark um, last week's Sunday, that we are obedient as unto the Lord. We are obedient as unto Him. When Christ says, don't be divisive, Christ says, support and build the church. Christ says, be obedient until the point of death. These are things that Jesus Christ said, and we follow Him, and that brings us life and life in abundance. I've been told the lights go off at eight, so I've got a, I've got a few minutes to, to wrap up. I, I brought some, not eight, six. Eight, wow, six, six. Eight, it's eight minutes to six, so we, we've, got a, we've got a few. So I, brought, um, I brought some props. Um, so this is, this is my kid's favorite little Duplo piece. He loves, he loves this one. So it's got this cool trick that it, um, it actually whistles. Look at this, look at this. See that, eh? So he walks around with this thing in his mouth, and I don't mind it at all. I mean, for days, he just, he just walks around whistling this whistle, and it's quite, it's quite, it's quite cool. Um, but this is, this is sometimes, I think, how we see our own lives. Yours, this is a, it's a great Lego piece, 
It's very shiny. It's very round. And you know what? It even whistles. And I think sometimes we talk about ourselves like that. We say, I'm the shiniest Lego piece in the box. I've got the most degrees. No, I'm sorry. I mean, you guys have a hard time, but it's, it's just too easy. Um, but I've got the most this or the most that, or I am the best at that, and let me be seen, let me be heard, or whatever it is. But the way the church is built is not through whistling Duplo pieces. The way the church is built, you ready for this? Ooh. With love for my kids, guys. Here we go, here we go. And that's how the church is built. It's built through a motley crowd of, of misfits, to be honest. People that are a bit awkward, a bit difficult, a bit cranky, a bit, I'm like that. Most of the time I'm like that. But God builds his church through the fellowship of us all. You can just go to the last slide there, Kath. Christ's church is built by a participating family. God's church, Christ's church, is built by a participating family. And I had to do this. That one's Gabe on the top there. Um, <laughs> but really, I just feel, I feel so convicted, convicted this evening that we need to, in a sense, step over ourselves a bit. And if it's your first time here tonight, it is wonderful to have you. And if it's your hundredth year time here tonight, it's great that you're here too. But that we need to step over what we can bring, what our whistle in terms of what that looks like, and actually see that God is building his church. And the way he holds that together, this green piece here, is the, it's the cornerstone, it's the foundation. It's his body, Christ as the head, it's his body that holds us all together. And the truth of it, it's actually his broken body that holds us together. It's through his broken body that we are held together in love. It's the only way we can do it. Otherwise, we just get grumpy and start fighting and start bickering and start being difficult and start talking about how loud the worship is instead of talking about how amazing Jesus is. And that's what holds us together is Christ's broken body. His broken body. As he died on the cross for us, he knits us together. And you can bring up that communion for me. And, we, and you can look under your chair. You can find the, find the emblems there. We're going to take communion tonight as a church as a church that is on the move, a church that is building. And can we stand? And maybe I can ask Gabe to give a little tinkle. Um, that we can, we can take steps forward. Let's stand tonight. And we're going to take communion. It's this beautiful representation of Christ's body, which the church is a representation of Christ's body too. That we are a representation of his body that each comes with their own part, their own strength. And as Jesus lay on that cross, hung on that cross, dying for us, he made a way for us to get to the Father. These are, these are representations of the real thing, but they are incredibly powerful, and there is there's power in the symbolism. There is. And maybe you come tonight feeling a little bit, a little bit over it, or a little bit battered, or just your family situation sucks right now. Maybe that's where you are. And that's all right. Because I believe there's life for us here in this community. Every time I see you guys, I'm, I'm so excited. I just, I love being here because you guys are awesome. And God is doing something in our midst. God is doing something with you. So let's take the community, let's take this not as individuals tonight. Why don't we take it as a church? So let's, let's take this, this bread and this cup as, as his church. Not as, not as people standing alone but there's people standing together. So let's, let's do that tonight. You can open that, that, top, that top leaf and take, let's take his body and thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken. Thank you that your body was broken on the cross so that we may have life and we may have eternal life. And Lord, thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood that was shed. Thank you that as your blood gushed out from that cross, it made the way for us to have fellowship with you. Just as Ryan said, as your blood gushed out, that veil was torn and we have access. We have access to you. We have access to the Holy of Holies and we have access to this family.
Jesus, we love you. We give our lives to you. We give all that we have to you. And we commit our church, we commit these people, the church, the church to you. May we be those that build your church as a participating family. In your precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to take your next steps or find out what's happening in the life of the church, head over to our website or follow us on social media. We can't wait to see you soon.